absolutely gorgeous Thursday night. Great to have you with us here on the ACC Network. So the Wolfpack coming off eight wins last year, seven and three in the ACC. The Bulls, very tough year last year, one and eight, 0 oh and seven in the American Conference under second year head coach Chef Scott, who has all those ties from Dabo Sweeney and Clemson. And we get this one underway as Gill gets a foot into it. And already a little bit of a dust up and some pushing and shoving. So the adrenaline is kicked in immediately. There's no doubt about it. I mean, season opener, but then you think about the fans in place as well, Dave. Well, Cade Fortin is the quarterback for South Florida. The North Carolina transfer played just a couple of games in 2020. In fact, his last start at quarterback came in 2018. It was against NC State, and that was an overtime defeat, although he threw the ball pretty well. Kind of wild that three years in between starts, you know, here at NC State. But they're excited about what he can do for their offense as compared to a year ago. And a handoff and right to a great big gaping hole for a sizable gain, a 16-yard gain. Oh, oh, so a quick start here for the Bulls. Taken down by Harris in the secondary. They pick up a fast first down. Felix in the backfield. Horton's going to throw over the middle and incomplete. Intended for Bryce Miller. The senior from St. Petersburg, Florida, and tipped. When they're fortunate it was tipped, there was big play capability after that for Bryce Miller with the way the linebackers attacked that run action. And a quick hit right at the line for a loss of one. Joseph in on the play. You know, when Kate Fortin is kind of running a bit of a speed option, they end up trapping him with the football and. Really, if you're NC State defensively, you want Fortin to be the ball carrier. He's not really a runner. They will use him, but they'd much rather the ball in the back's hands. Third down and 11. You saw Peyton Wilson, number 11, out of that linebacking core, and he's really the alpha dog. He frankly gets after it on every single play. Back to throw, Fortin, and short. And another big hit out of the secondary. And a loss of seven. Latrell Williams came on for the hit. So, so basically it's a screen and you see uh, Pitts just running underneath does a great job of tracking tracking Williams as he's running that shallow cross. He actually catches it on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage which meant it was a screen blocking downfield. That's an outstanding play basically in man coverage. So Stokes back to punt. And a lockup defense right away on display for the Wolfpack. And forcing the punt. And a fair catch on a 43 yard punt. So NC State will take over the football behind Devin Leary, who broke his leg in the first half of the Duke game last October. But the offense is his, Tim, this year. He threw for 336 yards, four touchdowns against Pitt. And he can really throw the long ball. Yeah, he's got a strong arm, Dave. You're exactly right. And I think his leadership and his confidence are the things that have probably stood out the most to this coaching staff as well as his teammates. His top back is Bam Knight. Where's number seven? And Zonovan Bam Knight will get that first carry. He's strung out to the sideline. And dragged out by Christian Williams, but he's going to pick up nine. Now Zonovan Bam Knight, the go-to guy. Knight and Ricky Person are very complimentary backs. Person, a very good pass catcher. But they play quite well off each other. From the shotgun. Looking to throw over the middle and caught. And going to pick up the first down and complete to Thayer Thomas, the slot receiver. 
And they're going to go fast here on their first possession. It's Knight again, and he is stacked up at the line, but he will pick up two. And it's interesting to see so far, you've seen, you know, run game to start it off, get into some empty, then spread you out again. You know, it's almost like offensive coordinator Tim Beck is trying to just get a look. How are you going to respond to some of these formations we throw at you? Second down and eight. And once again, the handoff goes to Van Knight, and no room to run there. He'll pick up nothing on that carry, trying to left side. And stopped by number 59, Andrew Mims. That'll bring up third down and eight. You know, North Carolina State likes to operate fast, but I think they get into some of these third down situations. They will slow their offense down to see if they can get a good look at what the defense is bringing in a known passing situation. Thomas in motion. And again, Larry wants to put it in the air. Plenty of time. Throws and it is tipped. And it is caught by NC State on the tip. And they're going to pick up the first down. That's going to gain 15 yards. And it's a completed pass for the first down. And going very quickly again. He'll air it out again, but incomplete. And look at this tip. You know, and I think he's lucky. This ball gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. But there's going to end up being a lot of traffic there, especially with Dwayne Boyles inside. And really just fortunate. Right man at the right place. But Christopher Toodle was able to come down with it. Second down 10. NC State trying to put together an opening drive here behind Devin Leary, the sophomore from New Jersey. Got a little bit lucky. And the handoff again goes to Knight. He will gain three hard yards. Preseason all ACC running back, also a dangerous kick returner. Led the pack in rushing yards last year. Averaged almost five and a half yards per carry. It's an outstanding back, and you've seen him run to the left multiple times. I do think that's the side that they want to run most often. This is the eighth play of the opening drive for the pack. Leary, good time again. Now he's going to roll. Looking downfield, over the top, and a completed pass. Showing off that athleticism, got it tonight for 11. That's an outstanding play, Dave. Moving to his left as he's, you know, deciding whether or not he's going to be able to throw the football. Look at him just kind of slow his body down and then the touch to get that ball up and down to Bam Knight, who does a good job of working for his quarterback. And I think, you know, it's maybe an underrated aspect of, of Devin Leary's game. We talk about his arm strength. That's pretty good on the move. Well, they've converted third and eight and third and seven on this drive. First and ten. Little pressure. He's going to fire. He's got a man and caught in the end zone. It's Ricky Person for the touchdown. Well, an impressive drive here right out of the shoot. A 33 yard touchdown reception by Person. We talked about his pass catching ability. He's good at pass pro. He's good when they, they bring him into the football game and throw, throw it to him. It's a really well-designed play and perfectly executed by the Wolfpack offense. Well, Dave Doran said this year between the offense and offensive coordinator Tim Beck, he said they are speaking the same language after a year of some miscommunications. And they have taken a quick 7 to nothing lead. NC State doing a good job putting a drive together. And Devin Leary to Ricky Person on the wheel route for the score. Wolfpack on top. Very sharp, four to five, 62 yards, a touchdown. 33 yards set up, Tim, by two third and long conversions. And one of them he created on his own. So South Florida trying to bring it out. Will be shy of the 20-yard line. Brian Petit. You know, it's just perfect timing of the play call. You got man coverage out here. You're going to pull that coverage. And what that's going to do is going to get Ricky Person on the wheel route. 
matched up on Boyles there, the linebacker, and you're going to get him in space, which is really where South Florida does not want him. That's a good job of pass protection up front, winning on the route, and then Leary obviously delivering a strike. They have been raving about the strength of his arm. And, and it's live. Watching him pregame, Dave, it certainly jumps out of his hand. So the Bulls with their second possession. Jeff Scott, the head coach, in his second year. And completed and dropped. Good job. Just a perimeter screen, Dave. They could do a good job. Take Tyler Baker Williams forces him back inside, and Cecil Powell starting to create some noise of his own with his pads. Dave Dorn with 50 returning lettermen and 20 starters back in the fold for the Wolfpack. On top, seven and nothing. Fortin throwing and incomplete. intended for Latrell Williams but off his hand and that's the second time Dave they've gone with some of this play action they get a good reaction out of the linebackers and they've got wide receivers open behind those linebackers and Fortin has just missed it twice they ranked 102nd in scoring last season 90th on yards per game getting into the end zone was a mighty task and preventing points even tougher, and he will fire this one incomplete. Some pushing and shoving, but no flag on the play. And the coverage by Chris Ingram. And, you know, NC State is bringing pressure from this right side. Here it comes, and they're going to end up getting home. And I think Forden basically feels like he's got to get this ball off earlier than he wants to throw it, not let that corner route develop. It's a good job of disguise pre-snap and then getting to the quarterback. So Stokes back inside his own five yard line to punt. And Thayer Thomas, one of the ACC's best punt return men, is back to receive it. And overran right there at the 45, trying for the corner and knocked out. 37 yard punt and a three yard return. Devin Leary timeline now. Most pass yards and touchdown passes in New Jersey high school history. Ninth career start, missed final seven games of 2020 with that broken leg. He is playing for his third offensive coordinator in four years. That's tough sledding. It is, and it sounds like the second year having the same quarterback coach, the same offensive coordinator, has really helped you reference speaking the same language, seeing the game the same way as your play caller, and, and so far off to a good start. On the carry, it's Ricky Person, and for more on Larry, let's toss it down to Kelsey. Well, guys, I had the opportunity to talk to Devin Leary about the injury that he suffered last year and coming back from it. He says the one word that stands out about his journey is resilience. As soon as he was injured, a flip, a switch flipped, and he was ready to go back to work. His teammate, his roommate, Peyton Wilson, one of his biggest supporters, the first one to run over to him after that touchdown. Well, it had to be a great moment. Had to feel like the weight of the world off his shoulders. It's night on the carry. Not of a night is the ball. And before carrier. suffering the broken leg, Tim, I thought he did a lot to get fans excited. He won the starting job in summer camp. COVID contact tracing took him off the field, and then Bailey Hockman took over. He has since transferred to Middle Tennessee. Leary returning to lead NC State to a pair of big road wins at Pitt and at Virginia. Yeah, and you know, really it was his job a year ago. Kind of caught a tough break with COVID contact tracing. So he wasn't able to start the season. And, and so I think it, things kind of derailed after that. And then obviously the broken leg. 37 you know. and incomplete. And, and so, you know, what has been really interesting, I think, for us, Dave, is we got to talk to uh, the coaching staff and, it's, you know, hearing from players they've been really excited about him his leadership his work ethic um, i think he's won this team over even though he has doesn't have a ton of experience as a starting quarterback here so after those third down conversions on the first drive they can't do it here xavier weaver back to receive the punt now for south florida as they try and get something going offensively 
A flag is down. And that punt will twist out of bounds, but a flag down. On a 23 yard punt. So not much on that. NC State in front, 7 0 here over the Bulls. Dave Doran put a priority on cleaning up what he called immature penalties. He had officials at every fall and spring practice throwing flags. Offside, defense number 83. Five yard penalty, replay, fourth down. Now, what do you think, Tim? Do you go for it? Well, he's got his offensive line, Dave Doran does, back out on the field. Look, he. The calling card for what you do offensively is run the football. I, look, I would be okay with going for it here, and it looks like we might see that. Fourth and two, and they will. 7.21 to go first quarter. And Ben Finley is now in the game at quarterback. He's the backup, the freshman from Phoenix. Brother Ryan started NC State and they're drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals. And now he's a punter. And they're going to try and down this inside the tank. Keeps on rolling. And that worked awfully darn well. So a little trickery. In the end, 7 0 NC State. On South Florida, Tim Hasselbeck, David Ryan, and Kelsey Riggs with you here on our opening night. And from their six yard line, the Bulls will start this drive, first and 10. Karen Mangan in the backfield along with Fortin. Now they got off to a quick start but then stalled. Some play action. He'll go up top and a long one and overthrown. And intended for the speedy freshman from Sanford, Florida, Jimmy Horn, who can really fly. He can really fly and he's wide open. You know, Cade Fortin is coming off the play action. They get the safety to come out of the middle of the field. And he's wide open. If you hit him in stride, nobody's catching him. And Charlie Weiss Jr., who is the offensive coordinator, told us the offense will take their shots, even against an NC State defense they know is very athletic and very skilled. Horton will keep it and roll to his right and slide on down. Isaiah Moore there for the stop. Isaiah wearing that coveted number one jersey handed out to very special players by Dave Dorn. It's his second year that he's getting to wear that. Yeah, he's been an outstanding player here for a while. You know, leadership and you know, Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator for NC State, called that linebacking crew, you know, the heartbeat of their defense. And Isaiah Moore, obviously a huge part of that. Third and five. Important to take the snap out of the shotgun. Looking, firing, and too high and incomplete. Trying to get Latrell Williams, but over the top of his hands. And so back to back, three and outs for South Florida. Yeah, and I think South Florida has to settle Cade Fortin down a little bit. He's had you know, probably on four separate occasions guys open. It was a good example there. It was like, hey, we check on offense, South Florida. They're going to check on defense. You see Tony Gibson talking to Peyton Wilson like, hey, they check, we check. And you do that, then you read it out as a quarterback. Cade Fordon does a good job of getting through it, finding an open receiver, just needs to make the throw. Fordon just two for his seven throwing the football so far. Negative five. Here's Thomas. He can be very, very dangerous. Looking to get through somebody, but taken down as he got across the 50-yard line. So some big, big games coming up. Key weekend matches. And, and quarterbacks featured uh, in the ACC in all of those games. I mean, think about what it's going to be like to see Derek King coming off of that knee injury. And, you know, obviously, you know, Clemson and their offense just reloading every year. Clemson, the six-time reigning ACC champions. That's Person trying to push the pile ahead of the 40-yard line and stacked up. He'll gain eight yards on that carry. And we will see Clemson next week. We will be there for the game against SC State. And it's always a pleasure to be there. 
in Clemson, South Carolina. Well, the analysts love this Wolfpack offensive line, putting it right up there with Boston College as the best in the conference. And they can move some people around, that's for sure, starting with the center, Grant Gibson. Ricky Person Jr. Ricky Person Jr. with the carry taken down by Townsell. Yeah, and you mentioned the O-line, Dave. You know, it, it's really anchored by Grant Gibson, number 50 you see there. He's a converted defensive lineman. And I think it's one of the things Dave Doran's done a really good job of here at NC State, finding, you know, places for players to play, even if it's not their recruited position, having them embrace it and then thriving at the position. Person again with the carry, and nothing that time. Yeah, Gibson is regarded as one of the nicest people on campus. <laughs> ESPN has named him one of the three best interior linemen in America. The Sporting News has him second team All-America. His dad, Harvey, served two terms as the mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina. But you typically don't like you know, describing offensive linemen is nice. I, I think <laughs> Dave Doran described them as big, strong, and mean. And mean. I think that, I think that's that's maybe a better description, at least when they've got their pads yes. on. Yes, in game, it's a different matter. Second down, ten. Lear to throw, and a short strike. They get across the thirty and complete. Dimezzi with the catch, the six-three, two hundred twenty pounder, the Wolfpack's top returning pass catcher. And back for his fifth season. And he's had a really nice career. I feel like he's a player that, you know, this could really be a year where, where you know, he kind of takes control. A little bit more mature, a little bit better feel in the offense, and, you know, more experience than anybody else at the wide receiver group. Third down three. Leary. Complete again and shoved out of bounds and a seven-yard pickup. And once again, it's person. And stopped by Vincent Smoke Davis. Well, and how about this? Watch the left tackle, Ikim Okwanu. It's a little screen pass. They get him out into space. That's 320 pounds just finishing somebody into the bench. That is so good. That's why he has an NFL future, and people are really excited about him. Could well be in All-America this season. First down and 10. Gaping hole, darting out to the 15-yard line and taken down. And once again, they continue to run it with person time after time, and Mims with the tackle. And they get into the red zone with a seven-yard pickup. Going quickly once again, person tries the center of the line. Keglar with the tackle. They're going to lose two. And you know, sometimes pace can get you in trouble. You think about it, you run this, this, the screen for a first down. You get a big run on first down. You know, the defense not being set actually worked to South Florida's favor defending that run on second down. Spotted at the 17. Three for four on third downs. Going for the end zone again, but that one overthrown. And intended for Rooks. Porter Rooks, a good, talented young receiver that they feel like they can get stuff out of. He's got leverage. He's running the corner around. You see how early Devin Leary throws it and really just misses it, almost like if he could hold it a half beat, get a sense of the angle that Rooks is going to set, maybe he had a better chance to complete that one. So this will be a 34-yard kick by Christopher Dunn, a three-year starter. Yet another area they have all sorts of experience, the Wolfpack coming back. It is in the air, and that kick is good. <laughs> NC State out to a 10-0 lead here late in the first quarter at home. Lots of good topics, lots of good guests today. It's go time. Atlanta. So the Wolfpack to kick off again. And we'll sail into the end zone. And for more on the USF offense, let's toss it down to Kelsey. Well, Dave, I was over here after that last series, and I'll tell you what, these guys still pretty locked in. Cade Fortin obviously overthrew that last pass, looked at his receiver and said, my bad. But he's got everybody from his offensive line, his wide receivers, his running backs coming up to him and say, hey, we're so close. Jeff Scott, he stopped by and he looked at him. He said, hey, we've just got to relax. We've got to connect. Let's keep going. We're close. But look at that, the last nine plays. Minus two, 
after starting out with a 16 yard rush. Well, and Jeff Scott is right, Dave. I mean, they've had guys open. They have just missed. And I think when that happens to a quarterback that is kind of a, a new environment, you, the excitement, the adrenaline, you just have to find ways to get easy completions. And off from Mangum, and he's tied up immediately. No place to run and no gain on the play. Quite a story, though, for Cade Ford to wind up at South Florida, part of that gifted 2018 group of high school quarterbacks, along with Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. He committed to Texas A&M. The coach got fired. He moved to North Carolina, his second choice. The coach got fired. And then Sam Howell became the star quarterback, so he was on the move again and eventually winding up at South Florida, but only at really the 11th hour because he was headed to Syracuse. And again, no place to run for Batty. The 5'8 sophomore is stopped by Tanner Ingle. Yeah, and, you know, these transfer stories are going to become more and more commonplace, especially at the quarterback position where one guy plays. And if you were a highly talent, you know, talented recruit coming out of high school, which Fortin was. And so it'll be more common. And now he finds himself with his offense struggling. Backed up near the student section. It's going to be loud on third and ten in the passing situation. Would not surprise me to see a screen here. Third down and ten for the Bulls. And another handoff off to the left side before he is stopped. Tanner Ingle with another tackle. He is super aggressive out of that secondary. In fact, they call him the Tasmanian Devil. And occasionally he's had issues with targeting last year three times in fact. Yeah, it, listen, he's not that big of a guy. 182 pounds is what they list him at, but he flies around. And ever since he stepped on campus, he has loved contact. And, you know, adjusting to the new targeting rules is, is more challenging for some players than it is for others. But he is not afraid of contact. And as you can see there, doesn't mind filling aggressively. You now South Florida 0 for 4 on third down. They have run right up against the Wolfpack wall. Thomas back for the punt. And so the Wolfpack will take over once again on offense with just three seconds to go. Here in the first quarter and that means Leary coming back out. He's been very sharp early on here. A 38 yard punt. And a 10 to nothing lead for the Wolfpack last year. Seven and three in the conference. They will be hosting Clemson on September 25th. It's obviously a gigantic showdown coming up there against the Tigers. And we'll be taking on number five Georgia Saturday at 7:30. Larry with the handoff, and they're going to stay on the ground here, still on his feet. Person trying to string it out to the left before he is stacked up eventually stopped by Andrew Mims so that's the end of the first and the Wolfpack getting off to a nice start couple of key third down conversions including one on a tipped pass that went their way they have the football trying to add on a 10 nothing lead for the Wolfpack as we head for the second quarter all Wolfpack it really tells you something when a tipped pass like that you're the guy your team comes up with it <laughs> means you should buy lunch to that guy when you see him on campus later this week as well at least third down and three person in the backfield again he's been a workhorse early he'll get the carry and a big hole person off to the races across the 40 trying to cut back inside and taken down around the 30 yard line eventually stopped by Matthew Hill but he ripped off a dandy and 32 yards. And it's a really good job. Penix is going to lead the way here along with the right guard, McMahon. It's just an excellent job of blocking. We saw Penix with the catch earlier, and that's just body on body, creating a nice running lane for Ricky Person. Oh, by the way, he can catch the ball, too. First down and 10. And that one fired out into the flat and will be incomplete. We want to welcome... Those of you who have been watching on ESPN, we welcome you to Raleigh, North Carolina, the home of the NC State Wolfpack. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck. 
and Kelsey Riggs in front of a big crowd, a live crowd, and what a wonderful sound they have made throughout the early part of this game, Tim. It's been fantastic. The energy in the stadium, and clearly everyone enjoying it, ourselves included. Devin Leary has the Wolfpack driving here. Sky-high expectations for NC State this season inside the Atlantic Division of the ACC. The same division with the Clemson Tigers. Leary back to throw. He's been doing it a lot short. A flag down. Completed to Bam Knight. But a flag on the play. With 13.35 to go here in the second quarter. Taking on the USF Bulls. who won just one game last year. Dave Doran's team. Eight and four, seven and three in the conference last season. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face, defensive of 45. 15 yard penalty out at the end of the run. Automatic, first down. And it'll go on the end, Darian Grant, the senior, with the penalty. Yeah, and those are the things that, that South Florida just can't do. As you see on the left side of the line there, he's just going to get his hands, you know, up into the face of Chandler Zavala there. And, you just can't do that, and it's a good job of the officials seeing it in there. Chandler Zavala, 6'5", 325, the All-American at Division II Fairmont State. They're expecting very big things on the talented offensive line for the Wolfpack. And they will keep that on the ground, and once again, it's Person. And he'll gain five. I mean, both of the primary runners, Bam Knight and Ricky Person, tough runners. Tough runners, and the thing that I think really impresses me about Ricky Person is that he has so much patience. And you know, there have been good backs that have come in here that have been heavily recruited, and it seems like Ricky Person you know, just kind of continues to weather the storm and, and find ways to, to get himself on the football field. Also caught a touchdown pass. Going to hand it off. He's going right back up the middle. Bowls his way into the end zone. <laughs> And a touchdown. Ricky Person has been the man here in the first half. He goes in from 11. And that will make it 16 to nothing, Wolfpack. Well, the junior from Wake Forest, North Carolina, has been carrying the load. And twice into the end zone. Christopher Dunn on for the extra point. Person already with 107 total yards and two touchdowns, Tim. Yeah, and it was an excellent job of the guys up front. Again, it's Trent Penix. The four and Bulls linebacker coach Ernie Sims was an All-American at FSU. So very strong connections to Florida State, too. Florida State, Clemson, the ACC, obviously very familiar with this conference and his opponent. Gordon throwing short and a completed pass. Got it out into the flat to Felix. And a flag is down again. 11.42 to go here in the second. And 17 to nothing, NC State. But a flag down. NC State has forced four straight three and outs. Holding offense number 73. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Donovan Jennings, he's a senior, one of the five returning O-line starters for the Bulls, a penalty. And so Stokes, the big Australian to punt it. Six foot five, never played in a college football game until this one. He's 27 years old. It's wild. It's absolutely wild. And He's getting his work in early on this one. He sure is. And a big punt. Thomas going to let this one bounce right to the one yard line. And trying to make that save there at the one yard line. But they're going to say a touchback. Christopher Townsville got down there quickly. That was 66 yards. And for more on Brad and Jeff, let's toss it down to Kelsey. Well, yeah, I got to catch up with Brad Scott before the game and talk to him about Bobby Bowden and what he meant to his career and what he also meant to Jeff Scott's career because Jeff was just three years old when his dad went to coach at FSU. He was always in the locker room. He was 11 years old when he decided, I want to be a coach. And Brad told me that has a lot to do with not just being around him and his coaching, but also Bobby Bowden and what he meant. As far as Brad being on 
the sidelines with his son now. He said he couldn't be more proud. He feels like he's 100 times more prepared for the job than he was, though, when he was a head coach at 39. Leary looking for the long ball going downtown, but incomplete, and another flag is down. Emezi, the intended receiver. But a flag here again, and the Bulls have been piling up the penalties all of a sudden. Pass interference. Defense number zero. 15 yard penalty, automatic. First down. On Daquan Evans. Bobby Bond, a great coach, of course, and people all around the country are honoring him. FSU honoring Bobby. Notre Dame and Florida State Sunday at 7.30, that game on ABC. I'll never forget when we walked into mm. Dabo Sweeney's office when we were doing our due diligence for a Clemson game, and there was Bobby in one of the big chairs just sitting and talking football with Dabo. Breakaway here by Bam Knight to pick up another one, and that goes for 21 yards. Lost his shoe. Running right out of it. He was running right out of it. And just to finish that thought, Dave, on, on Bobby Bowden, there's no doubt that was a neat experience for us. And obviously, you know, the, the imprint he left on, on college football, the ACC, obviously. And then you just see kind of the offshoot of, of head coaches and assistant coaches around college football today. Larry on play action. Looking long again. Has a receiver open, but that's going to be intercepted by the Bulls. That was intended for Thomas. And picked off by South Florida and Matthew Hill with the interception, the Auburn transfer with the pick. It is, and, and really, it's just an underthrown ball. It's there, Thomas, going to the post, and this ball's just underthrown. And Matthew Hill, you re re referenced the Auburn transfer, a former wide receiver, does a good job of going up and getting the football as Thomas is waiting for it to arrive. And, you're one of the few misfires we've seen from Devin Leary, and that one costs him. Sophomore from Lawrenceville, Georgia, with the interception. Jeff Scott, over two years, has 29 transfers to his program and feels that as many as 18 of them could be impact players this year for South Florida. And especially in the secondary. They feel like they've gotten longer and more athletic in the secondary, and Matthew Hill's a big reason why. On the keep, it's McLean. He is the backup to the backup, the freshman Timmy McLean. And trying to get a little more athletic here and run the football. And they pick up six. And I think this is a move you had to make. I don't think this is, hey, one play and you're out. I think Timmy McLean is going to stay on the field here to try to get a rhythm going, do something different with quarterback runs. And just not something you can really do with Cade Fortin, the offense struggling. I like the move. Second down, four. He'll keep again. And across the 50-yard line before he runs out of bounds. McLean, just a freshman, led Sanford Seminole High School to the 8A state title as a senior. They went undefeated, so he knows about winning. Yeah, and it's just something different to defend, Dave. We've seen two quarterback runs in two plays. You know, not something that they're going to major in with Cade Fortin, and I think that you know, now it just comes down to how comfortable are you in known passing situations with it was him. Just their second first down of the ball game. Right up the middle, it's Felix, and he stopped. South Florida attempting to get something going, having more success all of a sudden. Peyton Wilson with a tackle. Wilson really the star of the NC State defense, which is expected to be an exceptional defense. The sophomore from Hillsborough, North Carolina, really the star and the alpha dog. This is their first time across midfield for the Bulls. Yeah, and sometimes he's a young quarterback. There's a lot you don't know, but sometimes ignorance is bliss. You just kind of keep it simple. On second and eight, going to keep it on the ground again. And it's Felix again with the carry to bring up third down. And I think here, the third and two, I think this is, is already four down territory. And so... I think at this point, everything's on the table and even have a fourth down call ready right now. McLean on third and two with a handoff, but the Wolfpack saw that coming and stopped him. That was Drake Thomas for no gain. 
So it brings up fourth down and two. That's good timing by the NC State defense, really bringing some edge pressure right into the face of that, you know, read between McLean and the back. And as I said, I think with what's happened offensively, this has got to have it situation for South Florida. And a flag with 7.49 to go here in the second quarter. 17 to nothing, NC State. Offside with contact, defense number five. That five-yard penalty results in the first down. Well, those are the kind of penalties that really got under Dave Doran's skin. As we mentioned, a big priority to clean them up. He called them immature penalties last year. Yeah, and it's just, quite honestly, not really like his team to make a you know penalty like that. And, but I will say when you're not positive that, that he thought that he did, it is hard to get 300 pounds to stop, though, Dave. First down and 10. They're going to push Felix out. They're going to take him down for a loss. Felix on the carry, NC State with their fourth tackle for loss and swarming on this one. Yeah, don't you just look at the linebackers run. One, Isaiah Moore, 32, Drake Thomas. I mean, just guys flying to the football. And, you know, I think, you know, this idea of it, you know, Tony Gibson talking about his linebackers and saying, you know, you have to tell them, whoa, not sick them. You know, he basically <laughs> needs to back them down at times, but they are playing downhill. Trusting what they see and flying around. Good luck backing them off, too. <laughs> Still no passes here for the Bulls. Second down and 16. McLean. He's going to roll again. Still on his feet across the 40. And man, he took a hit. He got stuck by Drake Thomas. The linebacker came up to say hello. That's a gain of six. And yeah, we're talking about these linebackers flying around. We've seen McLean do an excellent job running with the football already. Scramble drill situation. Here comes Drake Thomas. Go force him back inside and boom. There's Isaiah Moore to clean it up. That's a really, really good job of playing team defense and flying around. Third down 10. Bulls trying to keep this drive alive. They're 0 for 6 on third down conversions. And a timeout. NC State takes their first chart time out of the half. Six minutes to go before halftime here at NC State. Tonight, but just to see them live and rocking and rolling is a great sight. It's been a lot of fun to be here with them. and They certainly were excited to get in the stadium. Third down and nine. And dropped by the quarterback. And McLean had to fall on it. Peyton Wilson was there quickly as well, and a little scrap for it. That'll lose eight yards. Yeah, it just can't happen. You're, you're third and in, in nine. You have a chance if you get some of it back, maybe you're in four down territory. Snap was a little hot, a little off to the right, but you know, as a quarterback playing in the shotgun, you've got to be a bit of a shortstop at times, Dave. And you know, I think that's one Timmy McLean probably should have held on to. Well, so it dies right there it was the best drive of the game seven plays four and a half minutes until that moment as he came in for Cade Fortin the starter because the offense had completely stalled so Stokes on to punt Thomas back inside his own 10 yard line and a wolf back eager to get the football back again a high and short one I'm gonna let it bounce and so the offense back on the attack. That punt for 32 yards. So Leary to get the football once again. Devin Leary, the sophomore from New Jersey, broke his leg last year in the first half of the Duke game in October. But the coaches have been raving about him throughout camp. Not only the coaches have been sky high, Every teammate you talk to has been sky high about it. They've been really excited to see him come out and play. And I think that, you know, his confidence, his work ethic, all of those things have improved, improved, impressed everyone around him. And I think the other aspect of it is, you know, he, he kind of doesn't seem to get flustered easily. And great opportunity here to respond from a mistake. Dan Knight with a carry. 
on first down. And for Moran Leary, let's toss it down to Kelsey Riggs. What well, you guys are talking about his confidence and some of the improvements he made after that injury. When I spoke to him, he said top to bottom, this is the best his body has ever felt. He wanted to lean out, gain some good weight. He did that about five pounds, but also said studying film and taking a step back from the game. It humbled him. It made him appreciate it even more. And you could see him just as even keeled as ever on the sidelines after that interception. Yeah, he definitely looks in full command. He has been picked off here. Going to stay on the ground and a great big carry across the 30-yard line. And spinning now is Knight, still on his feet. And it took two, three men to bring him down, a 26-yard pickup. And it was Daquan Evans finally dragging him down. Yeah, it's a really good job. Look, at it. it's basically elephants on parade. Basically, all the offensive linemen moving at the same time. Just an outside zone play. Look at the movement. Yakima Kwanu does a good job of just getting great movement. And then, obviously, you need guys blocking downfield. It's a really good job of Mecca Amezi working for his running back. Good luck taking him down on the first hit, though. And stumbling ahead once again. It's Knight with that possession. He'll pick up two yards on that carry. Down by number five. NC State trying to get into the end zone again before halftime. 3.36 to go. Taking on the South Florida Bulls, who are picked to finish last in the American Conference. Cincinnati was chosen number one. Second down and eight. Knight in the backfield. Larry wants to throw. Pocket collapsing, and he's going to be tied up. And a loss here of seven for NC State. That has not happened very often tonight. Oh, and really, it was pretty good pass protection. You know, Bam Knight does a good job with, with some edge pressure coming, picking up a block. Leary just didn't like it down the field, gets stuck holding the football. And, you know, I think in this situation, up 17, just inside three minutes, if you're smart with this drive, you know, obviously you don't give them the football back. And, you know, sometimes a sack is the best play. Third and 15 for Leary. Out of the shotgun. Trying to step up now. He'll throw it. And caught out of bounds. And there is a flag down in the backfield. So we've seen a lot of those here in the second quarter. But another flag down. Holding. Offense number 56. That penalty is declined. It is fourth down. Bryson Spees, the junior lineman. Guy, they really move around. He's a Swiss, Swiss Army knife. 12 starts the last two years at three different positions. So the Wolfpack and Trenton Gill to punt. 2.33 to go here in the second. Xavier Weaver back to receive. And he got this one off. A booming punt. And a fair catch. Outstanding punt there by the three-year starter. Gill, 57 yards with that one. Little trickery to get something started. Guys staying at home. And you bring in a new quarterback. And on a critical third down, can't handle the snap. See if Timmy McLean, who's still in the game, can, can get something going. Yeah, they'll stick with the freshman. And attempting to move the football, that has been a giant task. He's going to go up top with a long throw. Has a receiver. It's tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. And that one intended for the speedy freshman, Jimmy Horn. Nearly a spectacular play, freshman to freshman. It's nearly a spectacular play. Is right, and if he can kind of lead him up the field more and not turn him back against his body, I think Horn's got the ability to go run underneath it. That's the second time they've had Horn you know, running free or nearly free, just weren't able to deliver the right throw. Look at that offense. Zero passing yards in this game. And there have been some open receivers. It hasn't been a case of everybody getting shut down. Second and 10. And McLean back to throw again. Down the one yard line, trying to scamper out of there now. And he was dragged down as he got it free and incomplete. Drake Thomas was all over him. Number 
Thomas with the pressure nearly dragged him down in the end zone. Yeah, I and mean, we've seen McLean's speed, and you see this the speed of this NC State defense. Big, tough, physical linebackers, but they can run, and you know, I think that ball gets past the line of scrimmage. I think it's the right decision, and I think got to be really careful here. Just outside, two minutes left in the half. NC State's going to get the ball to start the second half. Now they're over seven on third down conversions. Third and ten on the short reception. Trying to get it across the 15 yard line on the dive. That was Horn again. Now Felix with that reception. Fourth and two coming up here for the Bulls. Inside two minutes. And all Wolfpack here in Raleigh tonight. South Florida, their offensive coordinator is Charlie Weiss Jr. And we talk about a guy who grew up in football, the son of a legendary head coach who did so many things at so many places and in Charlie's case only 28 years old is one of the brightest young minds in the coaching game. Fourth down and two and a timeout. Charlie is up there somewhere. He's a new dad too. Recently celebrating the birth of a baby boy. And we were really impressed with him talking to him obviously knows a lot of football been around a lot of football and you know, it's hard as a coordinator if you're designing guys to get free and just not able to make the throw and hit them. And this has been a really interesting situation here. I, I get that NC State is up 17 to nothing, but, you know, it's a fourth down. I was a little surprised Dave Dorn didn't take a timeout, uh, you know, with about a minute 54 left, 52, I think it was actually. And just give yourself a little bit more time with the football, expecting probably a punt from... South Florida backed up so much. Schrader back to Bunt Thomas at the 45 yard line and got up another good one. The punting game on both sides has been pretty darn impressive. They'll be down by South Florida. It goes 61 yards. Yeah, when you look at the left side of this NC State offensive line, they've been fantastic. I mean, you know, Dave Doran said they are big, they are mean, they are nasty. They've also looked pretty athletic and I think it's been impressive to see. You know, they, they run a zone scheme for everyone moving together. They've run a gap scheme, which is a power scheme. And that left side and middle, look at that's where they want to run the football. And, you know, we're saying left side. I feel like we need to include Grant Gibson in that. You take the center over to the left, Dave. You got about 950 plus pounds right there of just big, mean, nasty, athletic offensive linemen. That's where they want to run it. Leary throwing short. And a completed pass here to Person, who has been the workhorse of this first half for NC State. And a flag down on this play with 105 remaining in a half. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 17. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. And that's the nose tackle, Blake Green. Yeah, and you see, you know, Blake Green who's being blocked kind of at the top of the screen as Gibson is finishing him, and oh, here he comes. And <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm sure it was a pretty good shove. I maybe would have gotten pushed that far, but Grant Gibson, right. evidently a pretty good actor as yeah. well. 6-1-3-0-5. There to air it out, has a receiver wide open as they take another long shot, and that was Devin Carter down that far side for a huge gainer that goes for 51. That's a huge gain, and that ball is absolutely ripped by Devin Leary. Left hash, throwing a vertical to the wide side of the field. That is how you attack all areas of the field. That was a big-time throw like to see Carter stay in bounds once he had it. Yeah, so would he. I think he was very upset with himself. First down and 10. They have a chance to get it in again. They're going to go for the end zone and incomplete. 
And that was Carter again, that one off his hands. As you see it, I mean, he, Carter's out by the numbers. Defense is looking inside. And that ball was thrown from the left hash. That's an excellent throw. I think Carter, he's got to stay in bounds. Instead of letting the ball come to you and catch it at your waist, you know, hold your stem, hold your vertical stem, catch the ball and stay in bounds. And quite honestly, on, on that next first down throw there, that back shoulder fade was another beautiful throw by Leary that you'd like to see Carter come down with. Yeah, Carter with the reception on that previous play. Larry's the man in motion, a Wildcat. Person will keep it. He's up the middle. He pulls in again. <laughs> Touchdown, NC State. That's the third time for Ricky Person. Let's see, did he get across? Oh, tell you close. what it is close he does a good job of keeping his legs moving gets that right hand down it's under further review so they're going to take a look if it does hold up he'll have two rushing and one receiving touchdown 130 total yards but they're giving it a look yeah it's pretty cool play design i feel like i've you know, back in the, the Penn State Trace McSorley days with Saquon Barkley, you'd see some of that motion of the quarterback out of the backfield. Kind of catches defense a little off guard. And, you know, I tell you what, you know, with that angle, because we're a little bit behind the play, I feel like, yeah, he's in clearly. This angle in front of the play from the end zone, you know, it looks like that at some point. I don't know, maybe that right night knee isn't down with the South Florida defender's hand under it. And, I just don't know, Dave, that you see enough yeah. that you could overturn it based not, on it being called a touchdown. from that angle. No. I would agree with you, Tim. That's really hard to tell. Ruling on the field is a touchdown for a person. They've had no answer for him whatsoever tonight. And that may be true throughout the ACC when the conference games get underway. And give it another look. Did the knee drop? as he got to the line you know he does a good job and running backs always drill that you know got a hand on the ground you know kind of do a good job finishing after further review the ring on the field stands touchdown so ricky into the end zone for the third time 23 to nothing nc state and Dunn will be on for the point after. Three plays, 77 yards. And give it to number eight. He's going to find the end zone. Forty-eight seconds left before halftime here in Raleigh to make it 24 to nothing. The Wolfpack. Yeah, and offensively, that, that's a pretty impressive drive there. You get the ball back you know, with under 90 seconds left in the half. Quarterback makes a huge throw down the sideline. Another response, and then a creative play down in the red area. Motion of the quarterback out of the backfield, and then Ricky Person. You said it. There's been no answer for him. Passing game, run game, and you know it's. I feel like that happens a lot when we watch this NC State team. You know, because they have so many talented players. You know, who is it? Is it is it Bam Knight? Is it is the receiver? Is it the receiver group that's going to have the biggest impact? And you know, Ricky Person who. I think just continues to find ways to be a guy that they want to rely on clearly delivering with his opportunities. Well, Leary with a very impressive first time. Remember when Carter caught the 51 yarder. That was the seventh different receiver he has hit in this first half. You got to love that. We asked Tim Beck about you know who he needs to get touches and you know, I think he feels like with what they do offensively. The offense will distribute the football if the quarterback's making good decisions, and well, clearly Leary has been. Uh, Jimmy Horn trying to come out of there with it, but no place to run. ACC Network Halftime Report coming your way with Jordan, EJ, Eric, and Coach Rick, and they'll be joining you right here from Carter Finley Stadium. If you're watching on the ACC Network, if you're watching on ESPN, you don't get to see these guys, and it's your loss. It's a big time loss. I can see an EJ dance. I want to see Coach an EMAC dance a little bit. Do you really? You really do? 
I think I do too. What actually. about Jordan? Uh, Jordan could probably dance. Oh, a little Jordan bit. can cut a rug, to use a very old guy <laughs> phrase. <laughs> 42 seconds left before halftime, and the gentleman will be on display. Darian Felix in the backfield. They've had to go to the backup to the backup quarterback here, and Timmy McLean in the second quarter and flags down here. 38 seconds to go. And Dave Dorn has to be delighted with what he has seen in the first half. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 45. Not that necessarily. Automatic first down. That's on Van, the freshman, middle linebacker. And a 24 to nothing lead for NC State in front of the fans. This is always a raucous and boisterous environment. We really enjoy coming in here to do games in the ACC. Any chance we get in the night games, really a blast. And you got a terrific fan base, and they're very knowledgeable. And they know they have a darn good football team. As McLean will wind up and throw the deep ball. A lot of contact and a catch made on a play by Weaver. So that's a big, big gain. That'll go for 44 yards on the pass. And, and you can see why with these receivers who the coaching staff at South Florida love, you just need to give them opportunities, give them a chance to go up and make a play on the football. Timeout. You know, Xavier Weaver is a guy that, you know, he's got good speed, he's got good size, but he's got an excellent catch radius. And, you know, you mentioned there's some contact out, you know, down the field, there's some hand fighting. That's a good job of locating and tracking the football and making a play. And that's a huge play for South Florida. Yeah, finally some passing yards, too. They have 48 in the entire game. 48 passing yards and 44 just came on that toss. And it's going to feel a lot different if you can go into halftime without a zero on the scoreboard for your offense. Jeff Scott, 40 year old head coach. Highly respected offensive coordinator and recruiter at Dabo Sweeney's all-world program at Clemson. By the way, no mistaking the desire to make South Florida's culture as much as possible like what Dabo has accomplished at Clemson. Not a bad one to copy, I'd no, say. Yes. Right? <laughs> I would say you know, go, go, go that way, young man. It's yeah. a delicate balance because you don't, you know, you're a bunch of eye rolls when you talk about your former school, but it does make sense. McLean back looking to throw again. He fires to the end zone, and it's going to be incomplete. Intended for Williams, who went sailing out of bounds. And into the drummer. And, and you can see that he actually comes down with this football. Again, give him a chance, and then... Plays a little sn snare drum after that, Dave, I think, there. What do you think? That's a heck of an effort, though. <laughs> Something that wouldn't have happened last year. <laughs> Nobody there. <laughs> we love this version. 23 seconds to go, second down and 10. Felix in the backfield. Testing again, that's going to be thrown incomplete into the end zone and nobody home. He wanted Latrell Williams again, but that'll bring up third down and 10. Yeah, and with, you know, with a defender in his face, not able to kind of pull that football down to get it where Williams can make a play on it. And I've kind of been impressed with what I've seen from playing. Just kind of come in here. I, you know, he's not getting a lot of the, the reps, certainly getting, not getting too many drive reps to come in and make as many plays as he's made so far. They haven't gotten in the end zone, but he's looked confident. The rookie takes the snap. Pressure on him. He steps up and fires, and that one is going to be intercepted. Intercepted by Drake Thomas. And a pick for the Wolfpack in the final seconds of the half. And right as I give him a compliment, he just panics. Great pass protection. From South Florida, look at this. It's just three-man rush. He's got all kinds of time. He's looking around. You know, he drops his eyes. And when you drop your eyes and then come back and try to remain a passer, things like that happen. Really no one near 
Drake Thomas who comes up with the interception. And I'm not exactly sure where that ball was being thrown other than to Thomas. Thomas, the six foot, 240 pound sophomore from Wake Forest, North Carolina, with his first interception of the season. So 11 seconds to go before the half. NC State with a 24 to nothing lead against South Florida. Knight gets the handoff. He takes off. Breaking back inside. Usually takes several men to bring him down. That's the case again as he crossed the 30. And we'll have a 26 yard gain. And it's saying one second to go before Antonio Greer took him down. And 25 yards. And another look back. So it's gone to zero here. And that is halftime. NC State. So, so three scores in the first half. He's been outstanding, as have this Wolfback, Wolfback team, really on both sides of the ball. Well, he has three touchdowns, including a receiving touchdown. So you talk about an all-purpose back, and the Wolfback will have the football again and trying to bust one out across the 25-yard line before he is brought back. Let's get out of Kelsey Riggs. Well, I, had, I just caught up with Jeff Scott and asked him about the decision to pull Cade Fort in the first half. He said that was not part of their plan, but they felt like this offense needed a jolt, and they got that with Timmy McLean. They said they'll stick with him in the second half, and his message to his team was, look, a lot of these things that happen are self-inflicted wounds. We didn't give them all of these opportunities. We need to clean it up. They did not earn them all. Let's focus on what we can do, and it will be Timmy McLean at quarterback for them here in the second half. Kelsey, thank you very much. There is a stoppage. There is a flag down back around the 41 yard line. The kicking team had two players of number four during the kick. This is illegal equipment. Five yard penalty will be added at the end of the run. First down, NC State. So illegal equipment. A lot has gone wrong for South Florida tonight. There's another one as NC State will have the football to begin the second half. Two number fours. Look at the left side. Here and here. Can't do that. That's Christian Williams and Marion Dollison, the wide receiver, covering the kick. And a quick strike here. Seven Leary's pass. Larry's pass is complete to Imizzi. And a 12-yard pickup. And Bam Knight will take this one. Darts off to his left for a nice game. So it doesn't seem to matter which back is in there. They do damage the point finally with the tackle, but that's a 14-yard game. And it's because of the work the guys are doing up front. Look at the movement, which gets... Bam Knight to the line of scrimmage before he's got to make a move, and that's certainly a nice little cut. Handing off again, and Boyle, who is certainly the leader on the South Florida defense, the senior out of Miami, with the stop on Bam Knight. And a man down for the Bulls. That is Blake Green. Oh. You're copying us, Dave. You know. Injured man is up, and Blake Green out of the game. As we come back to you and Leary, back to throw, stepping up. Wants another long one, and incomplete. Overthrown slightly. Keon Lassane trying to make a diving play for that one, the sophomore. Just a little double move to Lassane, and, you know, sometimes you just come out of it a little slower. In fact, you know, not a double move, just kind of inside fade. And, you know, I think the interesting thing, one of the things you can learn is you see that ball kind of land out of bounds. It's like giving your guys a chance to make a play on it. You know, it, it's that long foul ball. That like, you know, ooh, it you know, sounds good. But, like, give him a chance to make a play on it because right there, he can't even get his hands on it. Yeah, a couple of overthrows. He'll dump this one short. And it's Knight getting away from one tackler. And nearly a second on that sideline. He'll pick up four. Twenty-four to nothing, NC State. Early moments of the third quarter. 
And Jim Phillips, the brand new commissioner of the ACC, will be joining us in the booth. He'll be here with Tim and I in just a bit. Get a chance to welcome the new commissioner in on the ACC network. He's got a tremendous resume, unbelievable resume, which includes coaching in college basketball. And so on the punt. And they're going to down that at around the six yard line. And that was Riley with the play and the punt by Trenton Gill. So first and ten coming up here. Right around the six yard line for the South Florida Bulls trying to get something going offensively and man that was a chore for them all of last year when they won just one game. They have switched quarterbacks. Cade Fortin started the game just got shut out. And they went to the freshman Timmy McLean out of Sanford Florida 6'1 195 pounds. And he has taken over since the second quarter and trying to get them rolling on first down and 10. It's McLean again. And nothing doing in the interior line there. Total stop and a loss of one. To bring up second down and 11. Dave just continues to be a good job of this NC State defense getting those linebackers playing downhill making plays on the other side of the line of scrimmage and the continuation here in the second half what we saw in the first half. Absolutely nothing opening up for South Florida. Not in the passing game not in the running game not yet. And McLean's going to look to throw throw short. Throwing that from out of the end zone and a completed pass to Bryce Miller. That'll pick up eight yards. I'd expect South Florida here, Dave, to do something to get Timmy McLean on the move. Just to do something. He's been the spark for their offense. Getting him moving around is probably the best chance of converting here. The three wide receivers set up to his right and he looks that way and he's going to flip it and once again NC State will snuff that out and shut it down. It'll pick up just two yards. And Isaiah Moore who probably wears that number one for the second consecutive year. That is a very very big honor that Dave Doran doles out. And to do it two consecutive years tell you the high regard tells you the high regard that this program holds him in. Yeah, he's been a leader, been a heartbeat kind of of that defense. He's done an excellent job, and I think it means something to those players too when they're awarded that number. So South Florida to punt again. Stokes the Australian, who's been pretty impressive in the kicking game and a fair catch. So the Wolfpack in excellent field position. When we come back, the commissioner of the ACC. Students. Oh. <laughs> student athletes, the fans, yeah. we've missed this so desperately Big over time. the course of the last 18 months. Big time. And you'll see the student section there and just to hear those voices because it's why you're in sports, it's why we're in sports. It's because of the sound of that crowd. You know, it keeps drawing you back. There's nothing like college football pageantry, right? We heard the band earlier, the pomp and circumstance, the tailgating, the reuniting of friendships that folks haven't seen each other for a while. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better than college football, and what a beautiful night here in Raleigh to welcome what, what looks to be a really good mm -hmm. NC State squad. Yeah, player down here for South Florida. We're going to continue our chat with Jim Phillips as they attend to a player down for the Bulls. How has it gone so far for you? Uh, still relatively new to the job in, in all respects, but how much are you enjoying it? It's been great. It's one of those aspirational moments that you're not sure you could ever make and uh, you think you have a really good assignment and then you get into it and it's even better it's been so, so much fun 10,000 student athletes 15 great schools 27 sport programs I mean you have it all in the ACC great academics great athletics but uh, a lot of work to be done the one thing we can say is that when 
when you are involved in, in the search to be selected as the commissioner of the ACC, no one has to explain what a great job that is. You know you want that job. Well, I thought I'd be at Northwestern forever. I really did. I've been there 13 years. It's home. I'm one of 10 children. We have five children of our own, and we never thought that we would leave. But when the ACC calls you, it grabs your attention, and you got to go. You know, you mentioned, you know, the different teams, the student athletes. Got to be a sense of pride, too, with how everyone is kind of handled getting back out on the field. You know, schools hosting fans in the stands. Just the job that each of these AC school, ACC schools has done to get to this point. I, I give an awful lot of credit to our presidents and chancellors, and then the folks that executed our athletic directors and their staff. It, it, it is a monumental task to put on an event like this. And in these times where safety really mm -hmm. is uh, heightened awareness and a huge responsibility for every campus. So my hat's off to all of our programs across our footprint. And, um, you know, this is the start of what we believe is going to be a great year for ACC football. And when you talk about a lot needs to be done, uh, so much of that focus is on health and safety and making sure that when fans come to a place like this, they are going to be uh, healthy and taken care of. It is, Dave. And we've learned a lot about the virus, right, and, and now the variant. But we still don't know everything. And so there is such caution for all of us. But I think we have a great... Uh, a plan we've been led by the medical advisory group and that's the top doctor on each of our 15 campuses who come together cam wolf uh the doctor at duke has kind of chaired it and they've been brilliant in leading us and telling us on how we can move forward in football and all of our sports this fall yeah and with just this week ahead i, I want to know your travel schedule i mean because there's a lot of exciting acc football about to happen. down the line there goes ben knight and he is off into the end zone and another touchdown this one a 46 yard romp for the wolfpack so you're going to be off and running like Bam Knight, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I had a broadcaster schedule like you two guys. Tomorrow I'm going to be in Blacksburg for North Carolina and uh, Virginia Tech, the first ACC conference game. Saturday I'm going to get to Atlanta wow. to see Miami and uh, Alabama. And then in the evening I'm going to run up to, ch to Charlotte to see Clemson and Georgia. Wow, man. Get, get to yeah. church service on Sunday morning and then head to Tallahassee for Florida State, Notre Dame Sunday night and then oh, finish man. on Monday with uh, Louisville against Ole Miss. Who puts together your travel schedule? <laughs> that, that's unbelievable. I'm, I'm blaming former Commissioner John Swafford, who I love and adore for setting up this kind of weekend schedule that I have to kind of go through. But no, um, it'll be fun. Couple looks here on a run by Bam. And I said, Bam, Bam you know, running like you're going to be running this week into all those games, but it's been a lot of fun. You mentioned, you know, this NC State team, you know, kind of sneaky good. Like we've been impressed talking to Dave Dorn and his coaching staff and seeing some of these players really on both sides of the ball. He's done a nice job with this program. And, and, you know, we've enjoyed watching them. And we also get to look at, you know, kind of the schedule ahead and certainly a lot of fun for ACC fans. It's hard to imagine a conference that's play, playing a, a more important weekend to start the 2021 college football season. Sure. Look at that. Alabama, Miami, Georgia, Clemson, of course, Notre Dame, Florida State, and the Ville up against Ole Miss in the Chick-fil-A kickoff. So some great TV coming up. You're going to see most of these games in person, but... You know, for the rest of us, we'll be watching on television, and it's a terrific way to launch. I don't remember a more exciting start to the ACC football schedule. Hard to imagine that there is a better start with the teams that we have ranked, the excitement of the season, so really looking forward to it. So, Jim, when you take the job and you just kind of look at the ACC landscape, is there something that you feel like, well, I want this to be one of my first big priorities, you know, in the conference to – really something that an area where you think we can improve well I, I love the sport of basketball I'm a former early in my career basketball coach one of the reasons I wanted to come to the ACC was basketball but our future will be directly tied to the sport of football mm -hmm. and I'm not interested in, in um, anything other than upgrading all of our sports but the focus has to be on football we have to be intentional with the decisions we make as a conference to really try to enhance and elevate the sport. And I think we can do that and take all of the sports with us, basketball and including all the others that, that we sponsor 
in the ACC. It's important, and uh, we have a great group of coaches, tremendous group of student athletes, um, great facilities, but we have to elevate that, and that, that means facilities, it means our programming, the network, the ACC network, which obviously we love and have the great par greatest partner in, in television with ESPN. Um, there's lots of different ways, legislation, etc. So our commitment is to football and all of our sports, and it's one step at a time. I'll tell you, we walk into the NC State facilities, they're just their football office, and if any fan got a chance to do that, it blows you away, the level at which they mean to compete and right through their facilities, and I know you want everybody in the conference, and a big catch made here at the 45-yard line, that goes for 29 yards. So finally, the Bulls trying to move the football, but that's something that I know you want, you want to see for every one of your schools in this conference. I think Tim salivates, you know, every time he comes through a place like NC State and, and our other schools that have really invested in a strong way for, for the sport of football. And um, it's something that's gonna carry us forward. You, you, you can have great coaches and student athletes, but they have to know that they're training in the best facilities with the best staff surrounding them. Mitchell Brinkman, a tight end, 31 yards on that jump pass. Well, I think you make a great point with the Jim about, you know, football leading the way. And you know, obviously with some of these schools, it's shared resources, whether it's in weight rooms or, you know, training facilities and things of that nature. And so, you know, they do kind of pull each other along at times. And I know that as we travel around these ACC schools, the facilities, and uh, are, have been very impressive and I think you know continuing to do that obviously continue to have a, an immense impact well we enjoyed it. it's it's the great side benefit of this job it's covering the games covering the student athletes the coaches it's wonderful but getting a chance to go into Clemson for example and see where the guys can play wiffle ball during lunch <laughs> right inside the football facility there is nothing they can't do and don't have access to it's pretty incredible and a big pop and flags down as Mitchell took a nasty hit after the catch after a four yard pickup and a flag down on the play 31 to nothing NC State. And Jim you mentioned that. This could be a really really good football year for NC State. How much of the fan in you sits around and, and does stuff like that sits around and looks at rosters and and what coaches have done recruiting wise and and make your own projections. I don't I don't know if I'm great at projections, but I <laughs> but I am consumed with rosters and recruiting and coaches Personal foul. targeting defense number 24 that play is under further review. I think it I think it all adds to your responsibility as the commissioner to to really dig in at the very ground level and, and know the student athletes I had a chance in the spring to visit all 15 schools and spend a day. And the highlight at every one of those campus visits was that opportunity to be with the student athletes. I mean, they're just amazing. They're inspiring. These are the these are brilliant students and tremendous athletes that are also committed to community service and outreach and helping those less fortunate. I mean, I think that's why we all love collegiate sports the way we do. Has there been a, a moment, you know, so far where you've you've come in and you've identify whether it's been a problem or something good where you thought okay this is going to be exciting this is going to be fun to be a part of and um, you know it hadn't been a ton of time and we're just kicking off a football season but has it been that moment yet I think the first day I took the job <laughs> 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 really I mean th this is this is an incredible conference yeah. when you think about the history of the ACC nearly 70 years old and the maturation After and the further growth. Review, it, it's it's there is just no foul phenomenal. For targeting number 24 can remain in the game. All right, so no targeting now against NC State. How much do you pull from your coaching days into this job as the commissioner of the ACC? I think it helps. I really do. I had the football coaches on a on a call yesterday, in fact, and it's kind of the last one before they started the season. And I think they appreciate the first thing. It was supposed to be an hour-long call, and I thought to myself, there's no way a football coach the week of their first game wants an hour with the commissioner. So we made it about 20 minutes. So that, that's a little bit of insight of yes. my coaching background and how I think I understand some of the modern-day coaches. It's a very good job of editing. <laughs> brilliant, on actually. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Third down and four. McLean looking for the end zone. And they're going to be short, but another flag is down. 
As the receiver is pushed out of bounds, that's going to pick up maybe four, but a flag on the play. As we chat with the new ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips, kind enough to take time out of an incredibly busy schedule to join us here. I think we're going to get offensive pass interference there. It's a back in your coaching days, Jim. That was a, a pick in basketball. Screen pick. They call right. it a rub in football a little bit. But either way, it's not legal. <laughs> 6.59 to go here in the third as they huddle over this flag here in Raleigh. And it's been a big night for NC State on top 31 to nothing. Really impressive on both sides of the ball. And Dave Doran was interviewed at halftime by Kelsey Riggs. Had nothing but plaudits for his team. Pass interference. Offense number 18 blocking downfield. Pass across the line of scrimmage. 15 yard penalty repeat. Third down. Tim, you never miss that one. No, I didn't think if Jim wanted to hire another official, you know, <laughs> he sent my application in. <laughs> I feel like he's, he's got plenty. He's good. <laughs> good, because I'd be a terrible official. <laughs> we got third down and 14 here for the Bulls, who are just trying to get points on the board, but that has been rough sledding, to put it mildly. It's just third down and 19 for South Florida. And this has been a baptism by fire for the freshman Timmy McLean out of Sanford, Florida. He was a state champion, never lost a game his senior year. He's back to throw again, and he's on the move. He'll fire that one, and it's intercepted by NC State. That's going to be the second pick of the ball game, And picked off by Cyrus Fagan. And a return of 19 yards for Fagan. The FSU transfer, he's a playmaker. He's really elevated the competition in the secondary for NC State. And Timmy McLean, you can't throw late across your body back into the middle of the field, kind of, you know, checking all the boxes of what you don't want to do, especially down in the red zone. And as you see him moving to his left, Fagan just does a nice job of, of reading the quarterback. And that's trouble doing that. And good run after the catch. Jimmy, want to thank you for taking the time. It's been a great visit and uh, covered a lot of ground. And hopefully you'll have the time with your schedule. I'm not sure with your schedule, maybe to join us again. But thanks so much and congratulations. Sounds good. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, appreciate appreciate it. what both you guys do. Thank you. Jim Phillips, new commissioner of the ACC in the booth with us here tonight in Raleigh. 6-10 to go here in the third. And a second down and three coming up after the interception by NC State. And the Wolfpack trying to add on some more. Leary's still in the game. He'll fire that one complete on the near side. And they're going to pick up a first down. And Mezzi with another catch. And some folks were here in the booth watching some of the pregame, and they were watching Mezzi work. And one guy said, that guy's going to play on Sunday. He looks like he's playing on Sunday. Well, I, I tell you, they have a lot of receivers that look the part. And, and I think it's just a matter of getting their production to kind of match the expectation of that receiver room. And, you know, look, we've seen this offensive line moving people around. We've seen the way the backs have run. And if you can get the receiver room to kind of elevate their play, it's going to end up being a really dangerous offense. Person with another carry. As he picked up seven, he continues a big night. Closing in on 100 yards. His 39 receiving as well. Larry looking again and will find him once again with a hit. As he gets across to the 50. Boils with the tackle, but another first down. And moving the chains again. I just love the, the versatility, how well-rounded Ricky Person looks. I mean, in the passing game, the run game, you know, they've talked about him in the past as a short yardage and goal line runner because he's tough. Guy that's good in pass protection, but... Looks like it's a good idea to send them out in the route. Julian Gray, the freshman from Charlotte, in at a wide receiver. And we're going to try and get him in a little bit tonight. He's a four-star guy with great speed. We're in the number 20 for the Wolfpack. Leary with a pump fake. Looking long. And a battle there. Oh, did he come up with that? There's a flag down and a catch by Amezi. 
And a sensational catch on the dive for 39 yards. Really, he's not, you know, doesn't do a great job of separating. Pass interference. But, you know, he's Defense being interfered with. The penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Yeah. Daquan Evans is interfering with him and looked like a Mezzi maybe had control of it. I don't know if they'll look at that one. Going to get the play and a run by Person. Person trying to find the end zone yet again, but I'm ready. This time. One more look at that catch. Yeah, you see the hand fighting. Oh. What do you think? Uh, I think Amezi gets away with one, but he's been a nice player here. And I think, you know, it, one of the things you do is you, you act like you caught it. You hustle your offense up to the line of scrimmage to run the play. You get points for acting like you caught it. Well, he's caught five for 71 yards. 31 nothing NC State trying to punch it in again here. Fairly late in the third. They're going to keep it on the ground and spinning inside once again. For a two yard pickup. And we'll bring up third and six for the Wolfpack. As Pinnix comes out. Larry looking to find the end zone once again. On third down, four of eight. And under three minutes to go in the quarter. Looking, looking, firing, touchdown! On the money to Gray, and we just called his number moments ago. Chris Toodle actually making that reception. And Toodle's a converted Wide receiver, too tight end, and you see good receiver skills there. That's a nice job. Devin Larry working to his left, coming back to Toodles, coming across that ball right between the two and the nine. So Larry with a strike, 210 yards and a couple of touchdowns for him, and the extra point is good to make it 38 to nothing, NC State. Devin Leary continues his hot night. Good job of South Florida late in the third quarter. And we'll kick off again. And South Florida still trying to get into the end zone to get something on the scoreboard. And they're going to try to run it out of there and an ill advised effort as a swarm of Wolfpack players will meet him inside the five yard line. You know, thousands are affected by Hurricane Ida urgently needing your support. You can donate right now at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross respond and help people recover from this disaster. We certainly hope you will dig deep and find a way in your heart to help. So many people have been desperately affected. Well, some of the images have been hard to see. We've seen, you know, games get you know, rescheduled and moved because, you know, areas have been devastated. And so. Kate like Porton back up. in at quarterback. So he returns to duty after Timmy McLean could not move the team into the end zone. And look at his, his field position as he gets back in action after a long sit. And Felix, he's going to be bottled up. Jackson will handle him and no gain on a play. You know, one of the things about this NC State defense is, you know, you just look at some of the big guys up front. I mean, that's Savian Jackson at 290 pounds. They're really big with their defensive linemen, and, you know, they're hard to move. And because they're hard to move, that then allows, you know, Peyton Wilson and Isaiah Moore and Drake Thomas to run around. And I think they've done a good job of recruiting the type of players that they want on that side of the ball. Second and ten, important to throw. And complete to Dollison. Omarion Dollison, sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina. And picks up ten. So a first down for the Bulls. They haven't had many tonight. 
And under two minutes to go here in the third in Raleigh. Kate Porton, the North Carolina transfer. Last game that he started was against NC State while he was a Tar Heel. And that was an overtime loss. He's going to keep it and try the right sideline as he scampers out of bounds. He will gain another first down. That's 11. And I think you can learn a lot about a quarterback, Dave, in situations like this. You start the game, it goes poorly. I think he started three of nine for zero passing yards, and then he gets pulled. You know, his backup comes in, has some success, but then you find yourself back into the game. What can you do to kind of, you know, show your emotional and mental toughness to your football team by coming in and responding uh, and playing better football than you did to start the game? It's got to be very, very tough as he hands off to the interior line. They go again, and a gain of two. And a carry by... He had tackled by Keshawn Smith and Felix with the run. Got to be very difficult, Tim, because you go through all of the hard work of winning the job and winning it over a couple of guys like Jaron Williams, who has started before the ACC from Miami, and Timmy McLean, the very talented freshman who's seen a lot of here tonight. But you won the job. It's your job. Yeah, and so the expectation, all you've thought about is, hey, I can't wait to get this start and play well. And... You know, it didn't get off to that start, and they needed a spark. And I think Jeff Scott, you know, did the right thing by making the quarterback move. And, um, and so, you know, it's hard to do that, as you see, you know, kind of the struggles on offense. Now, I think in part, Kate Fordon won the job probably because of what you see down here, you know, the interceptions. You want to eliminate mistakes, give yourself a chance. And, you know, he didn't hurt them with turnovers, but... He just didn't make some of the throws when they had designed guys open. So, but again, I think responding in this environment can show your team quite a bit about you as a quarterback. South Florida 0 for 11 on third down. And a sidearm toss. That's a tough catch in some traffic, too. And they do finally get one. This is a great example of exactly what I'm talking about. You just got benched. You came back into the game. Stand in there. Take a hit and make a throw to get a first down. Things like that. When you go and you watch the film and the rest of your team sees it, they'll appreciate it. And, you know, it's something that you can grow with. Difficult catch by Miller. But a third down conversion. That's the end of three. 38 to nothing, NC State. Come for the first rounders. Well, the NC State faithful, they have been into it tonight. And why wouldn't they be with a 38 to nothing lead? Tim, they have dominated on both sides of the football. They really have. And I think that, you know, Dave Dorn was excited to watch a play. I think he said that about 10 times to us. I I'm excited to come watch this team play. And um, I think we're starting to see why. Again, many predicting their second place team behind Clemson inside the Atlantic. As the fourth quarter gets underway and an incomplete pass, Fortin trying to target Terry. But incomplete in the opening seconds of the fourth. Now Leary for the Wolfpack, 15 out of 24, 210 yards with a couple of touchdowns. Bam Knight has carried 16 times, 163 yards and a touchdown. And Ricky Person has rushed for 90. He has caught three passes and he has three touchdowns. I mean, he's been outstanding, and I, you know, I think we were really focused on Bam Knight. I mean, I, I think he's probably the best all-around back. That being said, some guys get in the game and just find ways to make it happen. That's been Ricky Person. For the throw and out of bounds. Thomas and Fagan on a defensive style on side, 15 tackles and a couple of interceptions as well. So the Wolfpack has done it all. And you know. The secondary, which you know, if we you know go back to, to looking at this South Florida team, they have good receivers. They have speed at receiver, and you know, I think one of the areas of you know, that that could have been improved, you know, coming into the season was the secondary. And I think you know, we saw Fagan with the interception, and I think competition on that end has really helped this group. Fagan, the FSU transfer, with one of those picks. Third down and ten. Fordon running into the same trouble he did in the first half, and he's going to throw another interception. 
This one is picked off. And it's Engel with the pick. Tanner Engel, super aggressive. And it pays off again. That was a spectacular interception. Yeah, and really it's an in cut. And Engel is the deep half field player. And the ball ends up being a little high. And as he's closing on the receiver, and this is typically hard to do, it's actually looks like a pretty good catch. Almost David Tyree from the Super Bowl where he's pinning it against his helmet. Yes. Right there. And, you know, Fortin's trying to stand in there under pressure. But, you know, Engel's coming up to make a hit. And then, boom, gets surprised by the football and traps it on the side of his helmet. The takeaway bone. And a third interception. And they will stay on the ground and run it again, bouncing outside. The carry by Ricky Person, who was the workhorse in that first half. That's a serious bone. What do you think would happen if they let Tuffy get to it? <laughs> well, It'd be I, gone? It would be gone in about three minutes. Let's get out of Kelsey. Uh, guys, I'm right behind the takeaway bone, and this defense is so excited when it comes out. I was over here a little while ago when Chris Fagan got it. It is a whole party, not just with the team, but with the fans really getting in on it. Of course, they take it out, they hold it up, and then they sign it. And then at the end of the year, whoever has the most signatures is the one that actually wins the takeaway bone. It's something they started doing last year because defensive coordinator Tony Gibson said he wants a lot of dogs on this defense. <laughs> Isn't the funny the things that will motivate players, Dave? I mean, it really, it's a little competition. Just a little. Uh, it goes a long way. 38 to nothing lead. There will fire again. A completed pass. That one to C.J. Riley. You know, and some people may say, hey, it's, it's 38 to nothing. We're in the fourth quarter. What's Devin Leary doing in the game passing the football? But... I will tell you, that's a good example there. Great timing, ball out before the receiver's in his break. You got to think about Leary. I mean, between last year with, you know, COVID contact tracing, missing games, the broken leg, I think it's valuable to get him snaps, get him attempts, even in situations like this. Person staying up. But both of these guys Ricky so Person tough to Jr. bring down, Come Van Knight there. and Ricky Person. It takes more than one. And when you have two of those guys who complement each other so well. Yeah, and that's why, you know, Trent Penix, who, who we've seen, you know, going up and lead block, and he was a running back. And it was like, wait a second, this is a crowded room because, you know, Jordan Houston has a role as well. So how do I find my way out on the football field? And I've been really impressed with this group. Houston will get a carry here following a blocker. And picks up four yards on that carry. Both Knight and Person, incidentally, have reached 100 yards on the night. And truthfully, with both those guys reaching 100 yards, I'd probably want to see a lot of Jordan Houston for the rest of the night. First time since 2015 they've had two backs get to 100 yards in a game. So the list of achievements goes on and on here tonight. And it'll be Houston on the carry again, the sophomore from Waldorf, Maryland. And look at what that running back Tusum have done tonight. They have been the biggest part of the story on a very successful evening. I mean, it's dangerous for me to do live math, but 32 carries for, you know, 160 or 268 yards. A combined impressive. five catches, too. I thought it was really interesting listening to Ricky Person talk about their usage. And they like the idea they can, can kind of break things up and split the workload between them oftentimes. They, they feel like they're not going to be worn down over the course of a season. And I think that only works when you like each other. You know, you're going to compete with each other and like each other. And think back to, you know, Dave, we, we had a number of North Carolina games the past couple of years, seeing those two backs you know, they, they were okay, you know, rotating in. Michael Carter and Javante Williams, they were all right doing that. And you've seen it 
uh, you know, other places as well. And look, when somebody emerges, that's fine. But, you know, I do think that having a good room certainly helps. Well, it's great cut loose and out of bounds he goes. Showing off some of his outstanding speed. They really rave about how fast he is and they will pick up a first. I'll tell you what, look at Jordan Houston on the perimeter here. Number three, the block right here. I mean, this is, that, that's a pancake block. We, we talk about, you know, Icky Iquanu, you know, getting the bottles of syrup for his pancake block. Well, Jordan Houston, somebody needs to deliver him a bottle of syrup for that pancake block. Well, Dave Dorn does that when they go through the film reviews on Sundays. Icky, of course, has enough to stock a grocery. And a flag down here. Ball start. Offense number 85. Five yard penalty. First down. On Anthony Smith, the receiver. One more look at the block. I mean, just look at this block here. This is a pancake block, and it's hard on the perimeter. Golly, that's good. And you know something? As a running back, okay? You got these five offensive linemen, tight ends, receivers blocking for you all the time. That right there goes a really long way. Mm -hmm. when, when you see the back decide to do that, all of a sudden those guys up front and everybody else wants to pitch in also. Two wides left, Houston on the ground. Houston taken down around the 10 yard line. And stopped by LaPointe. But now it's Jordan Houston, a sophomore, who's the primary back in the offense and he's gaining yards. Leary by the way has hit nine different receivers Tim in this game. That's great. That's a great feeling as a quarterback when you when you know you've spread the football around. You know and I mentioned it earlier Tim Beck talked about the offense. You know being the distributor meaning the ball will go, when the ball goes where it's supposed to go everyone will touch it. They will keep it. Trying for the end zone, just short. As he will gain eight. Trying to dive ahead, and will bring up third and goal. All right, I'm on board with him staying in the game. Okay, I might not be on board with this, Dave. <laughs> He's spreading the ball around, coming off a leg injury. 38 to nothing. I, that, that one made me hold my breath a little bit. Looking to punch it in again. Third and less than a yard. And off Houston, right through for six more. And a touchdown by Jordan Houston. So it doesn't appear to matter who the running back is. They're going to be productive. They are. And they're going to be productive behind that left side. The movement that they are getting on the left side of that offensive line is something special. And, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that they feel like they hit the jackpot with Chandler Zavala, the left guard, the transfer from Fairmont State. And you get Akim Iquanu at left tackle with Grant Gibson at center. That, that's a good looking group. And the extra point up, and it is good. The pancake block was a big part of that. 45 to nothing. Well, Jordan Houston doing a little bit of blocking, getting guys on the ground, and then punching it in for the score, and there's no doubt that Dave Doran loves what... Well, Dave, in his ninth year at NC State, many, many people very high on his Wolfpack. Well, they're going to be tested next on the road. Mississippi State coming up. That's going to lose four yards. Dallison takes the hit. You know, we're going to see some of these young linebackers for NC State. And I know Tony Gibson, the defense coordinator, feels like they've got a good group. He feels like they've got a really good group behind them as well. We're going to get a chance to look at. Peyton Wilson, Isaiah Moore, Drake Thomas has had a really fine game. Bang him in the backfield. And Borden with the handoff. Look at their upcoming schedule now. Mississippi State, then Furman, and then number three, Clemson, on September 25. 
Yeah, and I think it's hard. You know, we know they're a good team. We know they're talented. It's it's hard to get a sense of how good, you know, in a game like this, an opener. But I think it was clear that with so many transfers and with the, the kind of the talent turnover that's going on at South Florida, that it was really, this game was really about NC State doing kind of their staple things on offense and defense. And so I think it's going to be interesting when you get into games where you know the personnel, you're game planning them to see how good really this team is. And of course, number one Alabama takes on Miami on ABC 3.30 on Saturday. Georgia ranked fifth, takes on number three Clemson Saturday at 7.30. That game on ABC and Notre Dame number nine facing FSU on Sunday at 7.30 on ABC. Inside the conference, Clemson, of course, always the top story, the six-time reigning ACC champs, but at North Carolina, Mac Brown has groomed Sam Howell into one of the most exciting players in the country. Miami, as you mentioned, has King back at quarterback. Dara King, and the Canes are going to be dangerous. Virginia Tech looking to bounce back from five and six. First real losing record they've had since 1992. And by the way, Miami playing at North Carolina on October 16. Carolina's at Notre Dame two weeks after that. Among the other big ones coming up. And a completed pass that will go to battle as they will pick up the first down and then some of Uyunglele, which I just nailed, by the way. <laughs> well, yeah. Obviously expecting big things out of him. Fumble, he picked it up. Battle got it back. Yeah, get your practice in before How next. I, I mean, just pulled that right I, I got to be honest with you. I did it thinking, like, I, this could go poorly, but I, I, I think I nailed it. Excited to get back to Clemson. That is always one of the real treats for us every college football season when we, when we get the opportunity. It's phenomenal. You know, there's uh, the excitement in that stadium and the talent that you get to see playing in that stadium. And, the, you know, I just think the experience – uh, you know, playing under Dabo in that environment has been really good in recent memory, and it's always fun to, to see that in person. By the way, I want to get to Boston College for a game this season, and I think we probably will. BC should be very, very interesting. But on that topic, congratulations to you, my partner, Tim Hasselbeck, being inducted into the Boston College Hall of Fame. Well done. Well, I appreciate that, Dave. Thank you. Uh, Certainly an honor, certainly caught me by surprise, and I thought you just wanted to go to BC for the short commute. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's that too, okay. But I wanna, I wanna be there for your induction. If we're invited as joiner, we'll pick up 10. With about 420 to go here in the final quarter in Raleigh. Do you have to make a speech, by the way? That's a good question. I haven't been given that update yet. But, uh, I think you might. I think there might be a speech attached to this. And okay. Well, I better get to work. Got to get to work now. I know for the Hall of Fame guys, that's a big deal. You don't want to leave anybody out. No. And I'll tell you, like anybody that's had experience, you know, in any schools, there's a lot of people and a lot you would want to thank. And I'm thankful for my time there and a lot of great teammates and coaches I had. Yeah. I'm not sure how he was going to react to the 50,000 fans or so that were in here, but he did great. Hung out in the first half down here and uh, wasn't even spooked by the fireworks. I think I was a little more shell-shocked than he was, you guys. Joined it with the catch. I thought Tuffy was tremendous, actually. I mean, incredible poise. Aged like, a little bit since uh, the yeah, opening kickoff. Clearly, but it's a good point. There is some... Pyrotechnics going on for introductions. Yeah. The student section was was roaring. And Thinking to myself as I'm watching that, why can't I get my dog just to I, sit? Just well, to sit. Having been on Zoom meetings with you for the past <laughs> couple of years, you have horribly behaved dogs. <laughs> I do. I do. There's no way around it. It's embarrassing. And off again, trying to keep it on the ground and punch in some points here on the carry by Joyner. The top returning running back, which was only 368 yards last year. But third down and four as we come up on two minutes to go here. And by the way, don't think a shutout doesn't mean something to Dave Dorn and this staff. Like, you know, these guys are playing hard, and I guarantee you it's something they're thinking about. No doubt about it. 
Gordon back to throw, is stepping up. Now he's going to run it. Trying to get down to that six yard line. He picks up six yards. And it'll be first and goal. So can they pitch a shutout tonight? The Wolfpack has done very, very few things wrong. Very few mistakes in this game. Well, I think for an opener, too, when you look at penalties, it's been a pretty clean game there as well. First and goal thrown over the top and incomplete. So second and goal with a minute 37 left. Well, we came on the air tonight talking about getting fans back again, how meaningful that is for the players, for the staff. Heck, for those of us who broadcast the game on television, it's huge. There's no doubt about it. It's a, there's something special about, you know, an environment in a stadium for college football. And Important to keep it again, trying to weave his way down to the goal line as he is stopped again after three-yard pickup. And a clock running, third and goal. When you think about the sacrifices, you know, whether it was testing or staying away from people, all the different things, the sacrifices for the players, you know, many times the reward is playing in front of the fans on a game day like they've been able to do tonight. These guys still in it. And looking for a stop. Under a minute to play. Third and goal for Cade Fortin, who has returned to the quarterback spot here in the second half. He's going to throw as a receiver, and it is incomplete. He was trying to hit Weaver at the edge of the end zone, but came up empty. Fourth and goal. It was interesting. Jeff Scott didn't love the play call. Uh, he was trying to call a timeout. And Looked like they had a chance to come up with it there, and Xavier Weaver just not able to haul it in, and here comes that opportunity for the shutout. The snap to Porton, back to throw. Throws, and it is broken up. So NC State on their way to a shutout in their two touchdowns. Bam Knight, 16 carries, 163 yards. Ricky Person, 16 carries, 105 yards, two rushing touchdowns. He also caught one for a touchdown. And NC State about to throw a shutout. Final seconds here in the fourth. They also had three interceptions. And just complete effort all the way around I mean special teams were sharp fairly you know clean game and I think it's what you want to see there's so much excitement about playing in front of fans and I thought that Dave Doran had his team ready and they came out and performed expectations very high for Dave and for the Wolfpack certainly lived up to those in the first game of the season that's a tremendous season opener as they knock off South Florida by a final score of 45 to nothing here in Raleigh tonight. And Kelsey will be talking to Dave in just a moment. The Bulls still with a lot of work to do. You got to believe happier days are coming. Outstanding young coaching staff.